Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Colonel Wayne Ward, your Master of Ceremonies for today's commencement. On behalf of the Corps of Cadets, I welcome you to the 112th Army and Navy Academy commencement ceremony. Army and Navy Academy, thank you. Army and Navy Academy has a long-standing tradition, best described by our model, which is inscribed on the museum arch behind you, pro Deo et pro patria, for God and for country. Today, the class of 2023 will enter through that arch for the last time as cadets and depart through the garden gate as graduates and alumni. The years these cadets have spent at the academy will soon be over. And at some point today, they will reflect on their memories of friendship as well as the many academic leadership and athletic demands of the academy. This year has been challenging. These young men have exhibited grit, determination, and perseverance. These young men are fortunate to have a village of support consisting of you, academy staff, faculty, and their cadet brothers. When these young men leave through the garden gate today, they will finish their page in Army and Navy history as they join the ranks of all other alumni who have gone before. We will now begin our ceremony with the processional. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand in honor of the processional party and remain standing for the invocation. And now, it's my pleasure to present to you the 112th graduating class of the Army and Navy Academy, the class of 2023.
Present Arms. Today, the invocation will be given by a cadet, Command Sergeant Major Sullivan Adams, our cadet chaplain. Could everyone please bow their heads? We thank you for all that you do for us. We also thank you for keeping our class safe throughout our senior year and all our years here at the Academy. May you continue to help guide and steer us in the right direction. Help us to be a beacon of light for our family, friends, and those we come in contact with, and to remember the values and lessons we have learned at the Academy. Allow us to always be the light. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I would like to invite the president of Army and Navy Academy, Major General Peggy Combs, to do introductions. Good morning, everyone. How are we all feeling today? All right. I will tell you that uh, my heart is filled with joy 
and I know all of yours are too. So good morning to all of you and welcome. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the graduation of the 112th class from Army and Navy Academy, the class of 2023. I'd like to extend a special welcome to the members of our Academy's Board of Trustees, led by our Chairman of the Board, Mr. Barry Schreier. Will the trustees please stand to be recognized? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for recognizing these special people. They donate their time, talent, and treasure to ensuring that our academy has a long and bright future ahead. I'd also like to extend our fondest welcome to the family members and friends of our graduates. It is by and through your love and support that these young men receive their diplomas and begin the next exciting chapter in their lives. Class of 2023, please stand. Okay, class of 2023, now it's your turn. Let's clap it up for your family and friends that have supported you on this journey. Thank you, please be seated. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our commencement party. On my immediate left, Mr. Drew Thomas, Army and Navy Academy class of 2018, our guest speaker for this morning. Mr. Barry Schreier, our chairman of the board, and Ms. Janet Pullen, our executive vice president. <laughs> On my right, we have Colonel Wayne Ward, our commandant of cadets. <laughs> Master Sergeant Lionel Salisbury, our assistant commandant of cadets. <laughs> Mr. Ethan Segovia, our Dean of Academics. Mr. Nehemiah Brunson, our Warrior Athletics Director. And Ms. Amy Coe, our Assistant Dean of Academics. Although not part of our commencement party this morning, but an integral part of the Academy leadership team are our other directors who support what we do each and every day here at the Academy. Our Dean of Admissions, Chris Thaler. And his three outstanding academic counselors who all of you know, because one of these folks brought you into our Academy. And that's Jennifer, Darren, and Victor. Our advancement director who assisted in planning this uh, event as well as every event that we do throughout the year, Ms. Faith Cohen. Our HR director, Tracy Overton. And our facilities and construction director, Clint Jesperson, one of the newest members of our team, our new director of marketing, Leslie Snyder. And finally, uh, I'd like to especially acknowledge our maintenance team who comes out here and sets up all of these events so very well and uh, who has the most flexible hearts on this campus, led by Ryan Larson. I'd also like to begin the introduction of Team Army and Navy, all of the wonderful men and women who influence your cadets on a daily basis. And they not only influence them, they inspire them, they motivate them, they encourage them, they support them, and they love them. I'd like to begin with our junior ROTC department the backbone of our leadership and character development program. Please stand when I call your name. 
our senior Army instructor and director of our Warrior Virtue Development Directorate, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Kirby Scarborough. And now our Army instructors, Chief Warrant Officer 4, retired Manny Ortiz. <laughs> Command Sergeant Major, retired Rob Garrow. <laughs> and First Sergeant, retired Jeffrey Palacios. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, for living the Cadet Command motto of leadership excellence on a daily basis. We will continue the introduction of the Army and Navy team with the introduction of our tremendous faculty by our tremendous Dean of Academics, Mr. Ethan Segovia. Ethan. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Ethan Segovia. I'm the Dean of Academics here at the Academy. Uh, before I introduce my team, I want to thank a few people. Uh, first, to the special person in my life, it's Difficult being a principal, but much more difficult being uh, the wife of a principal. And she uh, actually has a few jobs, plus she's an incredible mom, so my, uh, my wife, Lawrence Segovia. Uh, also, just been a, a pleasure to serve and also to, uh, to battle sometimes with, with uh, Colonel Wayne Ward and also Master Sergeant Salisbury. We've, we've had a great run. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our outstanding team of educators who truly make today possible. It's this special group of teachers, counselors, and supporting staff who prepare our cadets to be successful after they leave our gates. I want to personally thank all of our wonderful faculty for their hard work uh, during this challenging year. Please stand when your name is called. I'm going to begin with our admin team, our assistant dean of academics, and she's also a teacher here, Miss Amy Coe. Assistant Dean of Instructional Services, Department Chair World Languages, ESOL, and ASB, Ms. Maya Ramirez. Our Faculty Chair, Math Teacher, and Senior Class Advisor, Ms. Jolene Mitchell. No particular order, Science Department, Department Chair, Ms. Jean LaCobb. Dr. Robin Cowan. Senior Class Advisor, Mr. Gabriel Contreras. And Mr. Jade Swearingen. For Aviation, Mr. Kevin Moss. And his partner in crime, Computer Sciences, Mr. Malcolm Muter. Fine Arts Department, 30 years and running department chair, Mr. John Musser. Mr. Terry Matsuoka. And of course, our incredible bandmaster, Mr. Leland Lugo. English department chair, Ms. Jamie Frankfurth. Mr. Chad Stewart. Ms. Anne-Marie Castellano. And Mr. Brett Bartlett. Social Sciences, Department Chair, Mr. Nick Hall. Mr. Gavin Hooker. Mr. Philip Zamora. And Ms. Allison Stewart. World Languages, Frau T, Miss Eleni Theochari. Dr. Amy So. Ms. Victoria Cruz Rojo. And also helping out in World Languages this year was Mr. Lugo and Ms. Drake. Thank you so much for that. For the math department, Ms. Casey Drake. Department chair. Mr. Bobby Huggins. Ms. Denise Martin. And Ms. Tara Jabia. For learning strategies, Ms. Melinda Hess. Counseling, lead counselor, Ms. Brittany Zamora. 
also ASB director, testing coordinator, and a host of other things. Uh, on maternity leave right now, Ms. Kyla Gudekunst. <laughs> Seventh, eighth, and ninth grade counselor, Ms. Tis Tiffany Stanton. <laughs> and Ms. Kara Rauch. <laughs> Lastly, to our incredible academic support staff, executive assistant to the Dean Commandant and running the school behind the scenes, Ms. Amber Smith. Our wonderful registrar, Ms. Tammy Clark. Our jack of all trades substitute teacher, Ms. Chandria Whitwer. And our other substitute teacher, Coach Jeff Doyle. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in one more round of applause to recognize these dedicated professionals. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the Commandant staff and the Cadet Life members. I'd like to introduce Assistant Commandant and uh, Bravo Company TAC Officer, Master Sergeant Lionel Salisbury. Each uh, teacher, advisor, and counselor, and that's what your TAC stands for, they spend countless hours mentoring your cadets. And uh, I'd like to uh, introduce them. So headquarters company, battalion staff, and now new flight company TAC, Alfonso Oseguera. <laughs> Alpha company TAC, TAC officer Kevin Clark. <laughs> Band company TAC, Sergeant Jason McDonald. Echo Company TAC, Staff Sergeant Paul Nixon. Charlie Company TAC, Staff Sergeant Torrance St. Romain. Support TAC, DB, Sergeant First Class Damian Della Barba. Other key support divisions include our health center, headed up by RN, Ms. Tamaris Moncrief. <laughs> LPN, Natalie Gali Salisbury. <laughs> RNs, Karen Peter, Lisa Roundtree, Rachel Piera. <laughs> and uh, our admin support there, Ms. Briona, Sergeant Ms. Briona, Parton. <laughs> Transportation Department, uh, Mr. Tim Dowdy and Maria Rivera. <laughs> Summer Programs uh, Director is uh, Mr. Ken Weeks. And another behind the scenes, he's key, and that is our uh, fall and summer activities a director, and that's Mr. Alex De Los Santos, and with support from the canteen and lifeguard staff. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> Special shout out to our, our mess hall, Miss Rosie, Chef Albert, and their staff, please. <laughs> and also important out there is uh, our Army and Navy Academy uh, Parents Association and their incredible members and support throughout the year. Uh, they do awesome things for us and, uh, and your, your cadets, so please give them a round of applause. <laughs> and there's other amazing departments that make this academy run smooth, and just, just we'll finish with a round of applause for everyone. For the, please give one for these incredibly dedicated men and women. Thank you. Every two years, the faculty vote to elect a faculty chairperson. This faculty member serves in a variety of roles, which includes representing the voice of the faculty at academic council meetings, as a member of the board of trustees, and in many other capacities. Serving in her final year as the faculty chair, I want to express our deep appreciation for Ms. Jolene Mitchell and all she's done for the faculty. Please give her a round of applause. 
I would also like to congratulate, and I would like her to stand, next year's faculty chair, voted in, Miss Jamie Frankfurth. At this time, Ms. Mitchell will come to the podium to give the charge to the class of 2023. I would like to thank the parents, grandparents, relatives, and guests for joining the faculty, administration, staff, and Corps cadets in celebrating the graduating class of 2023, the 112th Army and Navy Academy graduating class. Thank you for sharing these very special young men with us. Gentlemen, today is a day you are graduating. Soon you will receive your diplomas and no longer be cadets of the Army and Navy Academy. You will be alumni. This is a new beginning, one of freedom and one of great responsibility. We have provided you with exceptional academic leadership and personal development opportunities. The knowledge, skills, and training needing to accomplish your goals and to help open doors to top university acceptances. UCLA, UCSD, UC Davis, UCSB, Embry-Riddle, University of Washington, The Citadel, Cal State San Marcos, SDSU, USD, and many other fine institutions. We have challenged you to work hard and to do your best, and we have provided you with the tools necessary for success. We have guided you and emphasized the importance of valuing and maintaining and demonstrating character in all that you do as you work to become leaders of your generation. And now it is up to you. It will be very challenging. Of that, there is no question. The opportunities are limitless if you're determined to work as necessary to be successful and to have a strong internal compass. One that is directed toward what is right, honorable, and just as virtuous young man. Last fall, as faculty chair, I issued you, the senior class, a challenge to carry on the traditions and high standards of the Corps of Cadets as established at our founding in 1910 to grow and achieve throughout the year to safeguard and honor the academies and national colors and the, to pass them on with pride and honor, knowing that you, the senior class, has achieved your goals. Today I am here to issue every one of you one more serious challenge. I challenge and I charge you to pursue your goals with energy and determination to work hard in all that your endeavors, to grow and to develop into men of good character, to always be virtuous men. Today you become graduates of this academy. This can never be taken from you. Remember the lessons you've learned, the skills we have provided you, and the bonds you have formed. Make every action and word spoken a demonstration that you are virtuous men, men of character, honor, and integrity. Go above and beyond in all that you do. Be respectful of others. Be grateful. Most importantly to your family who has supported and continues to support you in your endeavors. Live by the honor code, value these characteristics and other, and surround yourself with individuals who also value them. Congratulations, gentlemen. We are very proud of you today. Continue to make us proud. And remember, we are always warrior proud. Is there anyone here who will respond to this challenge? Congratulations to my fellow graduates of the class of 2023. This is a new beginning and we are ready. With the lessons learned from faculty and staff, I know that we will have the academic, leadership, and personal skills to succeed in college and life. I am happy to respond to this challenge for the class of 2023 and say that we promise to do our best to carry on the traditions and high standards of the Army and Navy Academy. We will pursue our goals with energy and determination. We will continue to grow and develop into men of good character. We will always be grateful for what we have learned at the academy. We are all, most importantly, we are Warrior Pro! It's my honor now to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Drew Thomas.
Army and Navy class of 2018. Drew attended our academy for five years, where in his senior year, he served as the battalion commander and was awarded the Association of Military Colleges and Schools of the United States highest award, the Leader of the Year. Drew's been busy since he graduated from here, studying in college and starting several small businesses. He is currently the CEO and co-founder of It's Personal, a personal hygiene company that he started. This is a special weekend for Drew as he comes back here just one week after receiving his bachelor's degree in economics and business administration with an emphasis in entrepreneurship and a minor in leadership from San Diego State University. We are happy to have his parents with us today, Howard and Joanne. <laughs> Drew sets the example as a member of the Long Gray Line, as he currently serves as our Vice President of the Academy's Alumni Association. Cadets, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Drew Thomas. So many wonderful, familiar faces here from the faculty and staff, excuse me, so many wonderful, familiar faces here from the faculty and staff to our wonderful cadets on campus. Raise your hand if you were here in 2018. Ooh, not very many of you, but enough to remember. Well, good morning. As said, my name is Drew Thomas, and I am honored to be here today to be the commencement speaker for the class of 2023. Let's give them a hand. You know, in 2018, I had the distinct honor and privilege to serve as the Warrior Battalion Commander. So to say this school means something to me is quite the understatement. I literally grew up here. You know, my first steps on campus were in middle school, you know, more than 10 years ago in 2013. And I can't believe that it's been 10 years, you know, and that last step that I took on campus as the Battalion Commander really set it in my heart that this place is something special. And let me tell you this. When I graduated the Army and Navy Academy, I was devastated that I lost, I thought at least, I lost my home. When I graduated college, I was relieved, so we'll get more into that later. <laughs> As you seniors have lived this past school year in anticipation of graduating, I too have had that anticipation. And last Saturday, I had the pleasure of walking across the stage at San Diego State University's commencement with my older brother right behind me. That was one of the proudest moments of my life. Thanks, Mom and Dad. Love you two so much. I wanted to share with you all today what I learned since leaving the seat you, the senior class, are sitting in right now, five years ago, since 2018. This isn't going to be a lesson, but I guess we'll make three points out of this and maybe a little story at the end. Many of you young men, as I was, were excited, or at least are excited, to depart ANA and experience the freedom and mobility that the real world gives you. What I didn't expect was the importance of my environment, and thus my first lesson, which involves relationships. Have you ever heard of the saying, you're a product of your environment? I think that rings true here, and definitely for me in my life. This saying is unequivocally true at Army and Navy Academy, and here the environment is structured, predictable, and easy to react with it. The world, the real world, has no such foundation. That's something that you need to establish upon yourself. As I continued into my freshman fall semester, I became a stranger in a sea of strangers, from the top of the world to quite literally the bottom of the totem pole. I needed friends, and I knew that I could make them, but I also knew I couldn't make them alone. When forging new relationships, initially I largely ignored red flags and the warning signs and the negative influences I saw in some of my peers. Nearing the end of my fall semester, I was all over the place, both academically and emotionally because of this. I was taking 20 units, which those of you that are going to college, you'll know what that means soon. And I needed to perform very well on my finals to pass. Typically at the end of the semester, you know, that's how it goes, but that's okay. I put myself in an environment that was not geared for me to be successful. And after a huge heartbreak, literally the night before my first final and a long week ahead of me, I would later find out that freshman fall semester, I literally failed every single class. And again, 
Let's take this from perspective. The battalion commander to withdrawing 20 units, seven classes that next fall. Going into the spring, I was demoralized but determined. I knew that I needed to fix my environment to allow me to succeed in the ways that I have previously. I knew that in my heart. So my first lesson is make good friends. Your environment really does matter. And it happens and it hits you in, mo in moments and ways in which you won't expect. But if you can listen to that and you can follow that, you'll do all right. My second lesson involves being a student and the value that that comes across. Many of you are going off to college after this. Raise your hand if you're going after college after this. That's right, nearly all of you, it's amazing. You know, others may not be in a collegiate environment, but you all will be students one way or another, just as you are today, right now. The true value of being a student cannot go understated. You know, in my sophomore year, I was attending business school, trying my hardest to recover academically from my mistakes freshman fall semester. You know, I wanted to get into the startup world, but I didn't know how to begin. But by utilizing the value of saying that I'm a student and getting an interview in front of a connection that from school I had no idea was going to lead me to where I was today, I was able to learn from and pitch my first business called Shadow Vault into a business incubator. For those of you that are novices to this business and startup world, an incubator is a place where you take an idea and turn it into a business through a process called lean startup methodology. Now, I wouldn't have learned any of that if I didn't use the opportunity of framing myself as a student that is trying to learn. So my second lesson to you gentlemen is be a student, even if you're not, and utilize that and ask what you want for. My third lesson involves a decision that everybody must make to really succeed outside of these gates of the Army and Navy Academy. Every day from the moment I woke up on campus for the first time 10 years ago in 2013 to literally this morning, Every single day has been filled with important and life-changing decisions. You know, I'm very blessed to have a mentor and a jujitsu coach named Jocko Willink who states that this decision is very clear. It's to do hard things. Every day I went to school to get my degree, every hour I poured into my startup companies, every second I spent cultivating my network of professionals. I never relented on that decision to do hard things. Whenever I got to a low point in my life, I think, why do I even bother? I always remind myself that this is where most people stop. That low point is the self-limiting belief that most people hold in their hearts. And this is why they don't win. This is what it feels like. This is what hard feels like. And most people can't do it. But you can. And the evidence of that is where you're sitting right now. You are in control of your life, gentlemen. It's on you. What do you want to be in life? Now, I didn't leave ANA wanting to develop women's portable bathroom products. It's something that kind of fell into my lap. I, <laughs> I left wanting to pour, you know, or wanting to pursue an under, excuse me, an understanding of business and success in life. And, you know, I left wanting to be a student at a greater understanding of where I could be in my potential. And I realized quickly my fall freshman failure that I needed to fortify my mind. I thought that I was strong being the battalion commander, but the real life, the real world out here, it's not so kind to you. But that's okay. I wanted to be a part of my journey, excuse me, I wanted to be a part of my journey as badly as I wanted to breathe. You know, being a part of the Alumni Association, I've had the honor of meeting cadets from the class of 1951 to the class of 2022, and now the class of 2023. And what I see is the most successful graduates of the Army and Navy Academy, old and young, are those who fully embrace the decision to work hard and smart at whatever they pursue in the future. Regardless of your circumstances, there's one saying that I like to keep heart. You know, there's no tomorrow, so seize this very minute what you can do or even dream you can do, and then begin it. Lastly, I want to leave you with a little story. Now, has anyone heard of the greatest golf shot in history? You know, this is something of contention, but in my opinion, it's Tiger Woods on the 16th hole during the final round of the Masters in 2005. He hits a shot that flies straight to the green, about 25 feet left of the cup, and the ball comes down this green and rolls just perfectly into the hole. Right before it gets to that hole, it displays the Nike sign and just do it. Now, some of you might have been there, or at least old enough to remember. I definitely was a little bit young at the time, but... You know, all things considered, this is one of the most incredible shots in golf history, a literal hole-in-one. 
And just to put Tiger Woods' performance into perspective, the shot before this was one of his worst shots of the day and arguably his career. You know, shot 15, he overshot the green, he shagged the ball, he totally messed up. But that mess up created one of the greatest moments in golf history. Are you following what I'm saying here? Sometimes right before the great thing that is about to happen in life actually happens to you, it can seem like everything is a complete disaster. Just because it looks like it's falling apart doesn't mean you are falling apart yourself. What did that moment create in time for Tiger Woods? It created a great moment for him. And you know, in the five years since leaving, since leaving and graduating a and this is what I've learned. Let's recap the lessons. First, make good friends. It's on you. Second, you know, being a student is so valuable. Don't underestimate the value that that holds in your community, in your relationships, and in your networking. Third is to do hard things. This school is an equivocally hard. There's no doubt that each and every one of you have earned your stage, earned your place in the seat where you're sitting right now. And truly, from me, an alumni, to you, a future alumni, in about one hour here, congratulations. And I'll leave you with this. In the last five years since graduating a and all of the pressure that you face today, this is what I've learned, all of the pressure that you face today, all of that relentless effort all it does is build the strongest of diamonds for tomorrow. Love each and every one of each other and love the world that we all share. Thank you very much. Were you proud? Drew, on behalf of the class of 2023, um, I'm proud to present this small token of our appreciation. Um, in this box is a sextant slash compass, and I think it um, represents Army and Navy Academy very well. Um, and you today, like the sextant and the compass, pointed the right timing, direction, and azimuth for these young men today. So thank you so much for, for the great words today. And here you are. Seems like just yesterday, Drew, we were in uh, my middle school history class, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Our first award today is the Bain Ede Salutatorian Award, which is named in honor of Charles Bain and Raymond Ede, two late deans of the academy. The award is presented to the graduating senior with the second highest cumulative grade point average, including ninth grade performance and through first semester senior year. This year's salutatorian is one of our lifers, band company commander Wesley Liu. He is graduating with a 4.41 GPA, and he will be attending UC San Diego in the fall to study engineering. Wesley? Hopin made a fantastic speech last night. My speech kind of feels so part to it. <laughs> Good morning. Before I begin, I would like to express my gratitude to my tag officer, Jason McDonald, and band master, Mr. Lugo, who have both been instrumental in taking care of me. Get it? Because I, I play instrument. <laughs> Anyways, I would also like to extend my appreciation to all the staff member and faculty, including some amazing people, Mrs. Zamora, Dr. Cowan, Ms. Mitchell, Mr. Stewart, and Mr. Rodriguez, though he retired from the academy. Today, the senior class and I have finally reached the end point of high school. To many of us, including myself, it's a day we all dreamt of coming. However, I have mixed feelings as I am about to leave my favorite staff members and friends. From middle school to high school, each year was unique and unforgettable in its own way. Of course, some were worse than others, but that's not important. It was all the people that I met throughout my years at the academy that made high school a memorable experience that I would never forget.
For a long time, I've always wanted to be perceived as normal, but I still find it challenging to do so. For some obvious reason, I became the smart Asian kid with glasses who plays video games and watches anime all day. <laughs> or the ang angry boy that everybody used to de describe me as. I still vividly remember the day when the journal response in English class asked which celebrity I find most attractive. Miss Frankie, with a smile on her face, enthusiastically asked me if I wrote an anime character, to which I claimed it was false, with an awkward smile. Or Sergeant Mack and Miss Lugo teased me when I was a, quote, angry little boy. <laughs> I understand why she would think of me that way, and I am, I am aware that many of you perceive me in a similar, if not the same way. However, that's not who I am. That is just one of the public images of how I represent myself. The real me is the sum of all the literal interactions and memories I've shared with my classmates and staff members. Want to gain knowledge? She knows everything you can possibly imagine. Have something to complain about? Roman has his ear up open. Want to goof out and enjoy my time? Dala is there for me. Jim, Jeremy will make sure I go. Talk about girls? Arbana will back me up. <laughs> Play some video games? Ethan and Nathan are always available. Have to consult about life? Reese will be there to listen to what I have to say. The list goes on forever and ever, but the important thing is that I am, I am lucky enough to have friends that are willing to be there for me. I may be academically strong, but I was never endowed with a lot of knowledge or skills. In fact, eight years ago at my old school, I was placed at the bottom of the class, and I failed every subject. In elementary school, I eventually started to skip school entirely. I never imagined I would be standing here today as a salutatorian. My life turned a complete 180. It wasn't instantaneous, but a rather a long process. I couldn't have done it without all the amazing staff that have shown support to my struggles. Whether it was Ms. Mitchell explaining a difficult math concept, Mr. Rodriguez patiently teaching me grammar in Spanish, or Mrs. Zamora reading my rambling personal essays. Each and every staff member played a critical role in my journey. I could continue to name everyone I've shared fond memories with, but that would take all day. To my fellow seniors, no matter what you like or dislike about me, I won't hold a grudge against you. Actually, I'm thankful for you and your chatters with me. Each one of your interactions had made a profound influence on my life, and it paints the complete picture of me and who I am today. Thank you to all the sagacious staff members who have been watching me grow since middle school, and to those who joined my journey. Thank you to all the underclassmen and graduates that made me feel like school is not a place of strangers, but of brothers and friends. To all of you that have appeared in my life, you are the ones that shaped and completed the full picture of who I am today. Lastly, congratulations, seniors, on making it through the end. Thank you. Great job, Wesley. The Bradshaw Valedictorian Award is named in memory of Dr. Archie Bradshaw, a 1919 graduate of the Academy who is known as a scholar, a soldier, and a gentleman. It is presented to the graduating senior with the highest cumulative grade point average, including ninth grade performance and through first semester senior year. This year's valedictorian is drum major and lifer Alexander Shen. Alex is graduating with a 4.6 GPA and will be attending UCLA in the fall to study psychology. I'm very excited to hear this. All right, so since I'm the smartest person in the class, I would like to give a lecture. Um, I call this my 25 steps to success. So number one, no, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> energy was kind of poor, so uh, I wanted um, to bring things back up. I mean, we're seniors, and uh, this is basically the end of our movie. 
So I wanted to give a little bit of an end credit. So one more time, I mean, I know all the staff already thanked everybody, but we're going to do it again, and I want everyone to be loud. So I'm going to yell, and then you're going to yell. Got it, seniors? All right. Can I get the band to help me out? I need some music. It's kind of awkward otherwise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, drummers, ready? Uh, can we do Hell Charming Navy? Ready? One, two. All right. End credits! The writer, the honorable Mr. Dean Ethan Segovia. Woo! Chief Staff Writer, the talented Miss Amy Coe. Storyboard, the magical Miss Frankie. Executive Director, Master Sergeant K. Nup Salisbury. Assistant Directors, Tech Officer Kevin Clark. Where is he? Uh, Staff Sergeant St. Romain. Staff Sergeant Paul Nixon. OC and the legendary Sergeant Mack. <laughs> Cast in alphabetical order. Could I one? Adam Sullivan. Yeah! <laughs> Could I two? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Unit Productions Manager, Miss Mitchell and Mr. C. Yeah. Where, where? Woo! Production Supervisor, Dr. Mama Cowan. <laughs> Justice Department, Miss Drake and Miss Martin. Editorial, Mr. Swearingen. Here? Where am I? Where am I? Set design and operation, Mr. and Mrs. Stewart. <laughs> Woo! <Let's hit> them. <laughs> Information supervisor, Miss Hess. Where is she? <laughs> Leadership leads, Colonel Scarborough and Chief. <laughs> Sergeant Major Garo and First Sergeant Palacios. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And I actually wasn't expecting Miss Amora to be here. Miss Amora, thank you. Do you have any words for the crowd today? <laughs> No. <laughs> this one? Uh, no. No, no words either? Okay, okay, okay. We can do more. We can do more. How about um, Miss Rouch is at a wedding right now, and Miss G's not here either, but uh, I know Miss Tiffany Stanton is here today. So, woo! Thank you for babysitting me all year. Um, Wesley mentioned this, but Senor Rafael Rodriguez, I don't know if he's here, but thank you for all the work you did. Uh, and finally, shout out Amber Smith. Where is she? Stunt coordinators, Coach Brunson, Coach Bobby Huggins, Coach Maya, Mr. Muter, Mr. Moss, Coach Larson, <laughs> Coach Kyle, and Zach. Is Zach here? Zach showed up, right? Oh, he's across the street. Let's go, Zach! Photography director, Mr. Matsuoka. Filming supervisor, Frau T. Music composer, the legendary, Mr. Musser. Bandmaster Leland Lugo, the honorable Bandmaster Leland Lugo. Costume designers, Miss Jenny Top and Miss Rachel. Are they here? Production personnel, Hawk! Hawk, where are you? Hawk, where are you? <laughs> Assistant production personnel, DB! Where's DB? Law office, Hooker and Hall Associates. Financial planner, Mr. Zamora. Medical lead, Miss uh, Miss Miss Tamaris. Where is she? Miss Nurse Tamaris. Did she make it, or is she in the health center taking care of someone? And T.J. Ward. Where's T.J.? T.J. Is he in the ops? Is he in ops? T.J. Can you hear me? <laughs> no way. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, uh, the caterers, uh, Chef Albert, Miss Rosie. I see them up there. Where'd Miss Rosie go? I saw you guys up there. Thank you so much. The food has been really great lately. And uh, special thanks to Major General Peggy Combs, and finally, the director, Colonel Wayne, Mr. Clean, the ward. <laughs> hat off, sir, hat off. Hat off. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, hat off. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, seniors. Congratulations. Wow, what a movie, what, what a movie. Thank you, Alex. To continue with the commencement awards, it is my pleasure to introduce the Director of Athletics, Mr. Nehemiah uh, Brunson and Miss Janet Poulin, who will present the Brookhart Mafuchi Scholar Athlete Award.
That's a hard act to follow. <laughs> this award is presented in honor of the late Colonel Pete Brookhart, former teacher, dean, and academic president, and in honor of John Mafucci, a dear friend of mine, who served as athletic director for 44 years, among many other roles throughout the years, to include interim president of the total of 59 years at the academy. It is presented to the graduating senior who best exemplifies the ideals of the scholar athlete. This year's recipient is Sullivan Adams. Presenting the Davis Golden Rule Award, I invite Ms. Jolene Mitchell, faculty chair, and Ms. Amy Coe, assistant dean of academics, to the podium. This award is named in honor of the founder of the Army and Navy Academy, Colonel Thomas A. Davis. It is presented to a graduating senior who best demonstrates the character implied in the Golden Rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This cadet exemplifies the Academy motto displayed over the arch, pro Deo et pro patria, for God and for country. The Davis Golden Rule Award this year is presented to Tafik El Tarawi. <laughs> Master Sergeant Salisbury and I have the honor of presenting the Association of Military Colleges and Schools of the United States Award. Association of Military Colleges and Schools of the United States presents a medal to the graduating senior who best exemplifies the ideas of the officer leader, morale, courage, integrity, honesty, leadership, responsibility, dependability, and stewardship. Colonel William C. Atkinson was involved with this national organization of military schools for decades and serves a, served as the president for several times. This award recipient is David Drawer. Stella Vaughn Atkinson Award. This award is presented in honor of the late Colonel William C. Atkinson's mother and is presented to the graduating senior who has consistently demonstrated excellent citizenship and moral courage during his year as a cadet. This cadet is also helpful to his teachers, cooperative with his coaches, and caring towards his subordinates. He consistently models the motto above the entryway of the auditorium, Metuite Confedite Decisi. No fear, no one fears to do 
that which one is confident he has learned well. This year's recipient is Shane Boylan. To continue, I invite uh, Ethan Segovia, Dean of Academics and Faculty Chair Jolene Mitchell to the podium to present the Breidenfeld Award. This award is named in memory of Cadet Howell Breidenfeld a 1978 second classman whose passing was mourned by the whole campus. It is presented to the graduating senior who has best lived up to the standard. He helped make Army and Navy Academy and the cadet experience better for having been here. Cadet Bridenfield's legacy. This cadet is a big brother to younger cadets. He is every teacher's helper and he demonstrates an uncommon sense of community, stewardship, fairness, and justice. This year's award recipient is Michael Ramirez. The final award to be presented today is the Virginia Powell Atkinson Award, which will be presented by the Academy President, Major General Combs, and Army and Navy Academy Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Barry Schreier. Perhaps the most coveted award presented at commencement is the Virginia Powell Atkinson Award. The award is named in honor of the late Colonel William C. Atkinson's wife, affectionately known as Miss Addie. The award is presented to the graduating senior who best exemplifies the finest traditions of Army and Navy Academy and who best represents the end result of the Academy's mission. The award is an engraved United States Army Presentation Sabre. It is presented by the Chairman of the Board of Trustees and Army and Navy Academy, Mr. Barry Schreier. This year's recipient is Alexander Shen. Before we get to the big moment, would Pierce Fleming, Wesley Liu, Quinn Verriker, and Alexander Shen please stand? These young men, these young men are lifers and have been at the academy since seventh grade, and we are very proud of their many accomplishments. Please give them one more huge round of applause.
And now, seniors, family members, faculty, staff, and friends, the moment has arrived. President Combs, as the Dean of Academics at the Army Navy Academy, it's my honor to certify that the following cadets from the class of 2023 have met all of their requirements for graduation as indicated on their diplomas. I accept these cadets and officially declare them graduates of Army and Navy Academy 2023. It is now my pleasure to read the names of our graduates. As a reminder, please do your best to stay in your seats. Keep the front area as clear as possible for the photographer and so everyone can see the stage. We will start with Sullivan Adams. Jason, Jason Aguilar. Pierce Backich. Shane Boylan. Kaylin Brasil. Kaylin. Alexander Brown. Bo Burden. <laughs> Christian Chase. You go, Christian. Vichy Chu. <laughs> Paul Clifford. Roman DeLucia. Yeah. 
David Drawer. Tafik El Tarawi. <laughs> Kamuelu Fatiaki. Pierce Fleming. Jacob Honeycutt. <laughs> Marshall Imperial Bobus. Baron Khan. Hoban Kim. <laughs> Nathaniel Lepe. Salutatorian, Wesley Liu. <laughs> Logan Long. Cross Lewis. <laughs> Finian McGonagall. Good job, 
Dylan Molthrup. Truck Nguyen. Kangarid Niamku. Antonio Palma. Jacob Pascal. De La Proto. Michael Ramirez. Richard Ramos. Benjamin Reynolds. David Sanchez. Valedictorian Alexander Shen. <laughs> Ian Sherry. Zeyuan Shi. Yeah. 
Charles Sima. Spencer Showbloom. Preston Smith. Sun Tai. Cameron Thompson. Will Trotter. Ethan Van Natter. Andres Vasquez. Quinn Verriker. <laughs> Ziao Wang. Rock Williams. <laughs> Matthew Wu.
Fei Hong Xu. Henry Shu. Alan Shu. And last, but certainly not least, Huayu Zhang. One last huge round of applause for the class of 2023. All right, gentlemen. And now I'd like to call forward our athletic director, Nehemiah Brunson, for the benediction. All right, gentlemen, we're at that point. Um, let us all bow our heads, please. May God's blessings follow you all as you find new journeys to travel. May you walk safely along the pathways of your dreams. May his gentle hand guide the decisions you will make and the passions that you will follow. May your hearts and lives always reflect love and truth. May hope be a light within you that you carry into each new day. You leave today going into a future as yet unmapped. Take faith with you as you go into the parts of your life not yet traveled by love, into the parts of the world unexplored by grace. Let compassion and hope be the roads that you follow today and always. Graduates, as you leave campus, you should always know that though you may physically leave through those gates, your spirit will never leave our hearts. Always remember, warrior proud, warrior strong. Assistant Commandant, please take your post and prepare for the retreat ceremony. Aye, aye, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this flag retirement ceremony symbolically finalizes the leadership change from the 2023 Corps of Cadets to the 2024 Corps of Cadets. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
both the Academy and National Colors are laid up for the summer until the start of the next school year. They will be officially unfurled and rededicated on 23 August 2023 at our back to school opening assembly in the chapel. Please give the Corps of Cadets a vigorous round of applause for completing a successful school year. I would like to uh, uh, thank uh, my wife, Delilah. I had to squeeze that in before we finish, honey. And now we ask that everyone remain quietly at your seats just for a few moments just for a few moments more while we move the underclassmen into position for the recessional and receiving line. You may be tempted to move around and get a better view, but just please, we ask that you remain where you are just for a few minutes longer. Ladies and gentlemen, the recessional bandmaster, prepare for the commencement party to recede to the senior lawn to form the receiving line. Major General Combs. Uh, please, uh, in the middle of the uh, walkway, if you could clear that. Thank you. Major General Combs, will you please lead the recessional party? Junior class advisor, class of 2024 officers and other underclassmen take charge of your class and move to the south side of the main walk and form a receiving line. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduates of the class of 
could give you That's the camera. Oh, we, we have another camera of the, the wireless one. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. now that we have the seniors, or the graduates in the well, the graduating seniors will now sing the alma mater one last time as a cadet.
at military academies around the world. For many generations of cadets and midshipmen, they have tossed their hats into the air once dismissed. At Army and Navy Academy, we follow this time-honored tradition. President leaves the garden. The junior class has stepped onto this senior lawn and has taken control. Ms. Maya, please lock the gate. 